So before you guys start watching this, Brian's in the bathroom. We're going to trick him, and we're going to blindfold him and um, have him try to figure out what Paul Mitchell products they are. So this should be pretty fun. We're going to see if he's prepped for his big trip to Vegas. FreeSalonEducation.com. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> catch you off guard. <laughs> uh, we're here with Splitting Hairs, episode 32, with my pal Brian Hare. Hi. Uh, it was my goal this week to remember right away to do the intros. So, uh, Drea Boland. Hey, hey. Who we can't see. <laughs> I, know. I know. I set this up and I'm like, yep. Now we really... Now we just have to listen carefully. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so, I'm excited to be back. You know, this is my favorite part of the week. So... Um, you have a big weekend. I do. So why don't you just take us through that weekend for a second? Uh, well, as soon as we wrap up the show today, I'm going to pack up my family in my car. And we're going to the royal wedding in Long Island. What's the royal wedding? <laughs> it's my brother's wedding. Um, and it, for all intents and purposes, is going to overshadow the actual royal wedding. It's just this big, lavish event. I'm sure there's going to be elephants on parade and all kinds of fanciness and should be fun. Nice. It's going to be insane. That sounds fun. Oh, and yeah. And then, what are you doing? Then, uh, a few hours after the wedding is over, I'm hopping on a plane to go to Vegas with a bunch of other educators from around the world to do our, uh, it's, a, it's a training, but it's also an audition process, from what I understand, for advancement as an educator. I don't know. We'll see. Right. It's just a lot of intensity. In Vegas. So it's one of those things where to kind of share with people your, I guess, your journey of this. You've been an educator for quite a while. Paul Mitchell's doing this thing now where um, they're taking all the educators. You pay for your flight. You go out there. And you're basically auditioning to try to further yourself in the company, right? right. And, um, and that's, but it's an intense weekend it's gonna be oh yeah i mean it's it's a lot of stuff a lot of people and it's packed into two days so i put so. together a game that we're gonna play with you later oh great to um <laughs> because you've been studying so hard for this to see how much you know i don't know if i'd say so hard <laughs> <laughs> so i knew that that would catch I talked you about studying a lot. right yeah well you played it off pretty well <laughs> so uh, so i have a little game it'll be fun so we'll, we'll try awesome. it later um so the other thing, uh, I want to plug Millennium, the experience, uh, coming up June 22nd. I did a video on that, but if you guys get a chance to come to Florida with me, uh, it's in Fort Lauderdale, and we're at the Marriott Harbor Beach Resort and Spa, which, you know, you can't, can't beat that, right? So um, I think you can, you can still get tickets, so make sure that you go on there. I think you could call Millennium and mention splitting hairs. Just do it anyways. See if they'll see if they'll hook you up. Just talk about it to random yeah. people. And I the also I store. got Mevo working on Yay. the screen. I remembered my password this week. <laughs> Millennium talked to me. They're like, seriously, you forgot your pet. <laughs> so um, so we got that. Um, check out some new products on shopfsc.com. We're gonna talk about those later. We have Barrett's tip. We have an uh, interview with the co-founder of Hairbrain.me, Gerard Spacey, or Scarpacey. I don't know why I say Spacey. Scarpacey coming up, uh, which I'm really excited about that. We went to a Rojo, me and Thad, uh, in New York City on Monday, uh, last Monday, and sat down with him for 45 minutes. So should be a really cool interview for everyone. So we'll cut into that in a little while. Um, yeah, so let's go over. Oh, and your mom's here. My mom is here. She's our big there. fan. Hi, mom. So we're gonna bring her on for a minute and uh, nice. Maybe chat about your childhood for a second. Oh, geez. So, um, so yeah. So let's get into feedback from last week's show. All right. Starting off, we got Morgan Johnson. Uh, she says, "Hey guys, just got to watching the podcast, and I totally fangirled too when you mentioned my comment. So now you get to fangirl again." Yeah, Morgan Johnson. Morgan Johnson. Uh, the Skills USA program is for Votech students. Some are in high school still and some aren't. It has local chapters. For me, it's countywide. Then it goes through district, state, national, and even international levels for all technical trades and vocational schools. They have the program separating cosmetology into hair, nails, and makeup. You have to 
You do have to recreate a picture of a woman's haircut in men's within 45 minutes, a fashion updo, something absolutely avant-garde, 45 minutes, a test, and finally, over-the-phone consultation. Skills program is fantastic. At the state level, you have to use pre-appointed mannequins from Pivot Point. Very excellent quality. Wow. So, yeah, so that was cool because we did mention we had no idea what the Pennsylvania whatever contest yeah, was. And now we do. And a couple people, even William commented to say that it was the same kind of thing. But um, William doesn't even live in Pennsylvania. I know, but he knows oh, that's sad. he's close though. He's in Virginia. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> We're in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, um, but we didn't go to school in Pennsylvania. It's true. You know what I mean? So th- all right. none of us did. Nope. Nobody that works here went to school <laughs> in Pennsylvania. That's a little weird. Um, okay. So, all right, next one. All right. <laughs> uh, Anissa, I hope, and not Anissa. We'll go with either. I said uh, Anissa. All right. Uh, another great video, guys. On the professionals leaving the industry, I know, at least with my experience, some schools only prepare you for state board, and pretty much that's it, just basics. We weren't really taught different techniques on anything. Then the majority of salons are booth rentals where you're pretty much on your own. So your channel is a gift in itself because further education is so important after you graduate. So thanks so much. You guys should do a split screen with Drea and the celeb on trending dresses. So I've been talking about this all morning. <laughs> so we tried to re-angle the TV and uh, so, that, so that we can get closer to the TV. We've recropped the celebrity pictures. So we'll see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'm taking your advice and I'll split screen with Drea and the celebrity. We'll just start putting the celebrity um, head on Drea. Yeah. Yes, that'd be so <laughs> the thing much fun. is with, with this podcast, this podcast takes hours to edit. So the more and more we can actually have just on the video, like the TV screen, that's why we're trying to do it because it cuts down on having to edit for hours and hours. It's just another. Soon we're just going to have you start doing like CGI animation. <laughs> I know. Um, like we'll sit down and do an audio and then Every, you have to create the visual. Y- yeah. I'm sure if I could do that, I would, but, um, so yeah, we'll do that. And if you've months. noticed, actually, this just reminded me, we have a new free wheel that yeah. we're going to spin. And here's the guest. deal. I'm That's not Barrett back there. No. That's our new wheel. Barrett's behind the wheel now. <laughs> um, so, but we, uh, with the wheel, here's the thing. My, my, uh, the guy that's kind of my mentor a little bit, my YouTube mentor, let's put it that way. Me. Frono's photo oh. and you, um, <laughs> we, he, he does a wheel as well on his podcast. I tried to come up with other games, and I think we're going to. We, we did think of other ideas, but I do believe that the wheel, I just have to take the idea from him because the wheel, being able to put sponsors on it is pretty cool and fun. So, oh, yeah. so we ordered the wheel on Amazon two days ago. It came yesterday. Love Amazon for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we get to write different sponsors on there. So we have Pivot Point, Amica, um, Pivot the point again. Shop FSE, pivot point again. I'm just going to keep loading it up every week. We got it and two lots days of ago. Fists. Yeah. A lot of t shirts on there, but we're going to spin the wheel. We're picking somebody from Facebook and Instagram from yesterday, and they'll, they'll spin, <laughs> spin the wheel to win uh, some kind of sponsored prize. So, um, so we have that coming up as well. All right. All Mr. right. We'll do that one last. Okay, cool. Uh, next, Amy Berry. <laughs> Eek. Love you guys. Thanks again for all you do. I've been spreading the word about your site. Another great episode. That's awesome. Sweet. Thank, Thank you, you, Amy Berry. Because it's it's people like that, I think, that have pushed this and kept it going. Oh, yeah. Because the more that people share what we're doing, obviously, the more their friends are going to see it and right. then share it that way, too. So, thank you, Amy. Thanks for sharing the love. I love this person's name. Duke. <laughs> Duke of Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that's like their birth name. <laughs> or at least married into that name. Yeah, it could just be their Google Plus. No, I'm going with that's. I'm going to name my kid that. <laughs> nice. Duke of Duke's hair. Uh, I saw you <laughs> when I was at work at a Rojo the other day. So here you go. There's proof that you actually were there. Yeah. And, and this is not you a know what was stage. cool? So so you met, you saw Duke of Dukes. I know. And I didn't even know. <laughs> Damn it. So next time, say hi. But the <laughs> other cool thing is that... Uh, the girl that came out to give us the uh, tour mm-hmm. of Arojo because Gerard was uh, finishing up an advanced class because they do uh, a couple times a year this big 30, 30 or like four week um, education event. So the people stay in New York City and they learn for a whole entire month, which is pretty cool. Uh, so he was finishing up that. It's nine to five every day. Wow. And then um, so a girl gave us a tour and she was like, she's like, oh, you're the free salon education guy. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, 
it's just funny to be in a uh did she know you were matt no she called me brian too um <laughs> no but uh we it's just funny to be in new york city at one of the top salons in the city and somebody to say hey yeah. you're a free salon education guy so that was pretty cool it's a big deal as well so thank you duke of dukes i want duke of dukes autograph <laughs> All right, uh, Wisconsin is Donna. Is that in Donna? I don't know. <laughs> Wisconsin is Donna. <laughs> I don't know what, I, I hate screen names. It's so hard for me. All right. All right, uh, I had the same thoughts on balayage paddles. It's funny, I was daydreaming about having a 3D printer, and the first thing I thought to make was a balayage paddle. Good call. I don't know that that's the first thing <laughs> I would make. <laughs> Wait, what? I'll put it on the list. Wait, what's the first thing you would make? Because you just thought about well, that really I, hard, and you're like, well, because nope, I just read an, I just read an article where, like, they're actually finding ways to make these 3D printers make real guns. So, of course, the first thing that popped in my head is like, I'd probably make a cool-looking space gun. <laughs> <laughs> I would make a gun first, and then I would solve the highlight problem. I like the sp- Wait, It was specifically a space gun, though. Well, right. I mean, that was uh, not what you I can thought get you were a regular say. gun. I want, like, a really cool, like, alien-looking when, when do you plan ray on going blaster. Space? Matt, what did you think he was going to say? I don't know. I, I mean, I immediately... It's a gun, Matt. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, and then Wisconsin Donna asked, Brian, do you have a little OCD? I love how you always put your coffee in the sheer circle on the table. Oh, that's, that's hilarious. Funny. Because I didn't even realize that I did it, but I do. But today like, he's like, I, read that, I really like, do. Oh my God. Yeah, that's exactly where it is. <laughs> so do I have OCD? No, I'm actually quite a slob. My mom is here. You can ask her. She's staying at my place right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just a weird little undiagnosed. Uh, you know, it's funny. Like if I'm at a bar... I put my drink down and I never put it back in the same exact spot. You know how it makes like a little ring? So I'll move it to like the next spot over and I just keep creating rings. I oh, see when I do that, I create the Olympic symbol. Like yeah. every, yeah. Si- like it's, it's halfway across this circle and then halfway across that one. So they're like interlinking. And when I used to smoke cigarettes, I don't anymore. But when I used to, so don't do that and quit if you do it. Just kidding. But, um, <laughs> I don't want to condone it. I'm just, <laughs> just saying. Just kidding. Keep going. When I put them out, I would stick them down, and I'd have to make sure that they were standing up. Oh, yeah. Before I would let it go. Maybe there is why. a little OCD in there. Yeah, there, may, there might be an issue. Mm. Never thought about it. Hmm. It's cool, though. I guess. That's yeah. why I put that there. <laughs> That's why I sit on this side of the table. The like other if thing. I sit over there, it's shot. This just reminds me of this. So the pivot point cord tacos. <laughs> so Brian loves these things. I, I just like saying cord taco. I know. <laughs> So this is something that we're giving out free with every uh, Shop FSD order for, from Pivot Point. But it's so funny because she's given me a million ways to use this from your glasses to, um, you know, actually holding cords. So you just put your cords together and clip it, right? That's the normal function. But the other night I was editing and I have a glass uh, top on my desk and I had a drink because, you know, I'm yeah, an alcoholic, I guess. So I had a drink and it was like, you know how like it was humid and it's just like melting everywhere. Condensation. I was condensation. Thank you, Dre. You're welcome. I was like, you know what? There we go. And I was so a little coaster. Cord taco becomes yeah. a coaster. Yeah, it's multifunctional. And a frisbee. Did you just hit the camera? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know, but he you hit the GoPro, but we don't know if it's <laughs> the right angle now. Nice job. For every, it was totally worth it. Here's that. Take my phone and just check the angle of that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's hilarious. <laughs> I could I do that again if I tried. I love the on Brian's <laughs> face right now. Okay. Moving on. All right. Um, oh, well, awesome. Nice. Mr. DJ Dave One says, when you do trending tresses and show the stars, you used to put them up right on the podcast screen, like episode 16. A direct quote, episode 16. Yeah. The way you're doing it now, I can't tell who they are, can't even see the hairstyle. So my favorite part about this is, this is my father. (laughs) 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 So he's like, so I'm talking to him on the phone the other night, and he goes, he says the exact same thing that he wrote here. And I'm like, Dad, you don't even do hair. You are a mechanic. He's like, but I can't see the styles. (laughs) I'm like, okay, so, so not only did we get it from from somebody else, but we got it from, yeah, we're good. I know. Uh, yeah, good job. I fixed it. Yeah, you need to throw harder <laughs> next time. But so we're fixing the trending tresses. But dad, thank you. My dad <laughs> has watched every single episode. I think my mom has as well. Your mom has. So you know, 
Between my mom and Matt's dad, we get a lot of critique like, yeah. throughout the week. I know when it comes out, I let my mom know the podcast is out. And then I get, like, for the next hour, just texts. Texts Just letting it. me know <laughs> the lighting, the angle, the comments, everything. Yeah. And then we get to read your dad's all week long. Yep. Like, I'll read something. I'll be like, God, this guy was a little harsh. Oh, it's Matt's dad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I it's know. cool. That's cool. It's just fatherly advice. Yep. See, my sister watches trend- watches the podcast every week, and I get to hear about how funny Brian Hare is. Yes. Yeah, my dad says the same thing. He's like, Brian has such a deep voice. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he has the perfect radio voice I'm like come on see at least he's not like well at least you have the perfect face for radio it's oh. true that's true thanks Matt's dad yeah this one's for you <laughs> alright are we going into questions I can have a media? deeper vo- well, yeah. <laughs> sorry you want to have wanna, a deep voice contest <laughs> 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 oh, go ahead <laughs> alright so then going into questions from social media I like this. You want me to read this whole thing? You don't have to read the whole thing if you if you can sum it up. Uh, basically, I, there's this is not in English, so I can't even guess. Like this the first name. few sentences is pretty cool, I think. Yeah. Well, basically, it's a stylist who has been a stylist uh, in South Korea for the past four years, and to sum it up, this is basically just a question on can we do sort of videos just on texture, dealing with texture more. Yeah. She's having issues with, you know, dealing with really really thick, super straight Asian hair. A lot of perming, I guess, is going on over there, which makes sense because there's not a lot of natural texture in that hair usually. Yeah. Um, and it was just asking questions, you know, fine hair versus thick hair and coarse hair and all that. And I think that is definitely something that will be a part of Danielle's whole little yeah. Yeah. texture lesson, which we got, we talked to her. She came, visited, we played. Uh, we just have to nail down as soon as we have a f- some free time on a Wednesday. I think once you guys are back from Vegas, because Danielle's going to Vegas as well, right? Yeah. So um, once you guys have that out of your mindset a little bit, and you know, because it has been, it's going to be a pretty intense trip. So you guys have been really focused on oh, that. Yeah. So once you guys get back, there'll be free time and everything. But the thing that I loved about this was she says, I watch your channel on my way to work uh, and after work every day. That's pretty awesome. Which is crazy that somebody in South Korea is watching yeah. while they're driving to work. You know? Well, I was ho- when I read that, I was like, I hope she takes a bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, or just listen. Driving with you know, my phone. You, you could put the podcast on and not actually watch. You could just listen. It's true. But um, just to be able to reach somebody, that's the cool power of the internet and, oh, yeah. and what's going on now. So it's pretty cool. It's very cool. Uh, Sarah Lamas on the balayage video says, how long do you let it set? I love that because I have to read that in Southern accent because I bet that person's from down South because it's a very Southern way to put that. Yeah. How long is that set for? Um, that was just depending on the, uh, the desired level of lift. Yeah, I think the good. Which is a good link to the step three that we just had yeah. come out because I did my, my step three of the 14 steps to becoming a better hair colorist. And step three was about developers, you know, what they are, the point of them. And in that type of scenario, how important it is to know why you're using what you're using. You know, it's, there is no answer for that because that completely depends on what you're working with, what developer you choose to use, how light you want it to get, how light you don't want it to get. So you let it set as long as you want to. Yeah. You just watch it. I babysit all mine. It's, when I teach these in classes, I say that's, you know, it, it's one of those services. There's a lot of reasons that it costs more than, you know, typical foils or anything like that. And one of them is it's a luxury service and I very rarely leave them. You know, that's not like where you put a color on and let it process for a half hour and go eat lunch or go do another haircut or whatever. Like you always have to babysit this because right. it could be five minutes for this person that they're sitting there. It could be 40 for another. Well, and you also got to look at, when you double book things like a balayage is tough that to, you can't really double book right. with that. I, I don't because you have to watch it. So you have to charge more. It's, it's about time. Where, your time. Yeah. So if you have a single process, you can double book in there. You don't have to charge as much because you can fill things in. Right. But when you're working with that, so cool. Uh, all right. Then we've got Eve man on the key to success is frequency of visit. Great vid. Watching all your vids, are you sponsored by Millennium Software? No. <laughs> Why would you think that? That doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> Millennium, first off, I, I've said it a million times, but I, I just want to say with this question, um, we 
have always been um, supported by Millennium. Millennium puts Matt's pictures in magazines. Yeah. So <laughs> that's worth a lot. <laughs> no, but Millennium, uh, every year they send me to their conference. They give us exposure. They do a lot of things for us. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, I love talking about them. Plus, if it wasn't Millennium, if I was using something else, I would talk about that just as much because right. it's more when I talk about Millennium, it comes with a business tip. And with that business tip, there's always something behind it. And you have to, whatever's running your business is what you're going to talk about. Right. So I, I mean, try to reason make it. You yeah. have those business tips because you have something that helps you get through business. Yeah. You know, we have something that helps us do our job and we love it. And when I'm using something that I've never used something better than it, like Mizutani scissors. That was a complicated sentence. I know. <laughs> I'm I mean, very, I, I got there with you, but thanks. that was... So, but Mizutani, I, I haven't used scissors better than... <laughs> what is wrong with that sentence? Anyways, I feel Mizutani like you're, scissors you're are so awesome. close to tripping yourself up on this I know, one. But I get it. I get through. Yeah, tie your shoelaces <laughs> together and go for a jog. <laughs> thanks. So, um, <laughs> just it, it, if it's a great product you use it. And then if you find something better, then you talk about that. But for now, that that's the best thing that I think that's out there and it helps run my business. So that's what I talk about. Agreed. Cool. Catfire four on the point of view, men's textured haircut clipper over comb says, I'm really enjoying these point of view haircuts. I feel in some ways they give a better representation of what you're doing as a hairstylist and being super visual. I appreciate that. I can see how this will look if I was doing it. This is a, Fun cut, great texture, and one I find to be very popular with men I see in the salon. I agree. I'm so happy that people like these videos because, first off, they're easy yeah. to make. And there's um, no editing. There's no <laughs> editing, which I think is the best because the more you edit something, the more unreal it is. If you look at haircutting videos, and I've heard forever, like the big fancy videos, they're edited so much, that person probably didn't have the right outcome that they wanted, and then they just went back in readjusted it and then started filming again. So yeah. it's like, sometimes they just put things on there that you don't even need. So it's cool to see salon reality, I think, but we're also going to take this to a whole nother level and we're going to start, wow. I'm going to wear more GoPros. So I'm going <laughs> to wear one on my head, one on my chest, shoulders, yeah. hands, yeah, finger, oh. finger GoPros. <laughs> But I'm going to attach one to the scissors somehow. I'm Maybe I can get GoPro to come out with a scissor attachment. That would be cool. Um, but pretty much we're going to uh, we're going to keep advancing those videos because they're really fun. I like sitting at home and voicing them over because it's kind of like I'm discovering what I do in the salon at the same time. Mm. It was so. funny. Matt keeps asking me to do it. But he only asks me when it's like a guest that I'm getting ready to work on that I have absolutely no idea what we're going to do. <laughs> like it's the kind of people that come in and they're like, I don't care, do whatever. So I don't even know what I'm going to do until I'm like halfway through. And I'm like, all right, so this is the direction we're going. I'm like, yeah. I can't do a video on something. <laughs> like I can't instruct someone to do something that I don't even know what I'm doing But yet. what I tell them is it's, that's what's cool. It's salon reality because then you do the thing and then you could talk about how you thought about doing this. And then you went mm -hmm. here and you went here. That's what people want to see, I think. It's a good point, well, Matt. I you know. made that point. Yeah. Well, I'm with one it. of my favorite parts of the point of view videos is how into it the guests in the salon get when yeah. it's happening. They it's get so funny. They, they get they so are, serious. They're like, I know. I'm like, you can talk and it's fine. Just pretend like gonna this isn't over. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretend like this robotic thing on my head that's blinking red and blue <laughs> is not there. Putting this blood crushing yeah. mark on my face. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop over. We're going to check out the Gerard Space Scarpacey interview. Um, and then we're going to come back. Does that hey, sound bye. good? So we'll see you guys right after this interview. Hey, guys. This is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I'm here with Gerard Scarpacey, right? Is that how you, That's right. Is there's, that good? There's okay. many ways to pronounce it, but I know. that's my, my preferred That method. was the correct way? Okay. Yeah. There's, a, there's a story behind it, as there is for everything. But uh, Do you want to... Yeah. Tell me. You yes, know, when my, gran when my grandfather there. came to, uh, to America, he wanted to be American. Came from Sicily. And in Italy, you would pronounce it Scarpacci. But okay. he wanted to, you know, he forbid his children to speak Italian. He wanted to be American. And he started pronouncing it Scarpacci. Okay. And uh, that's just how my father did it. And that's how I've done it. And that's the story. That might just be but, how Midwest American I am, that I yeah. would just 
read it that way. Yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah, it's supposed to sound more American. But like, you <laughs> okay. know, if I'm in Italy or if I'm talking to Italians or people that, you know, really speak Italian, they usually would say Scarpacci and I don't correct them. But yeah. You know, that's the story. Nice. There you go. All right, yeah. cool. So I'm I'm really excited to be at a Rojo first off. Um, to, you know, in New York or, City. Or a Rojo. Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> Depending on how you want to pronounce it. Right. I never messed that one or up. Or a Rojo. <laughs> so we uh we drove up. I'm I'm from Iowa, so um and I moved here ten years ago to do to do hair, to start my hair career. So just first off, driving into the city is like um just a crazy experience and then trying to park and then, you know, finding this place. But I'm here. I'm excited to be with you. Um, uh, you were one of my number one guys I wanted to sit down with. So, um, so I'm excited to be here. Oh, great. I'm and, honored. Thank you. Uh, so I want to start off a couple of things. Obviously, I want to get into uh, what you're all about, your, your background a little bit. But uh -huh. the thing that I liked most about you and what, what I look up to you for is that right from your hairbrain.me profile, which we're going to talk about hairbrain in a second, it says... I'm just a guy who's dedicated his life to the art and craft of hair, and along with uh, along the way, had great mentors who shared their knowledge with me, and I'm just trying to do the same. Right. And it's not a it's not a crazy fancy bio. It's straightforward. That's what happened with you, and that's uh -huh. what you want to do for people. And I think that that's excellent. And everything I ever hear about you is that you're the most giving hairdresser. There is. So, well, thank you. So I'm, tell me about just uh, who was your mentor? Who are those people you're talking about, I guess, is my first question. You know, I mean, for me, um, I've had so many along the way. It started, you know, um, the very first salon I ever worked in was owned by a guy called Vince Smith, a Vince. He's uh, down here in Battery Park City, Lower Manhattan. He had a great, successful little business, and he believed in education, and he trained me, you know, weekly. Um, and he was a disciple of Sassoon, so he would incorporate Sassoon training into the salon training. Um, he, he was my first real mentor, and I learned from him really the service side of the business and the communication side and whatever he had to offer technically. Um, you know, what I quickly learned from him was that I loved Sassoon. Right. And, you know, he was, again, a giving enough mentor that he told me, well, if you want, if you really love that, you should try to work there. The thing that I know most about you is that you're an educator. I don't know much about you as a stylist behind the chair, but you've educated a lot of people, right? You're, and you're a huge part of the education program here at Arojo. So why don't you tell me about... Uh, what you do well, here and what your daily role is. Well, it's just kind of a continuation of the same story. You know, when I went to Sassoon, um, right away I was engulfed in a, an intense training program that was still, you know, really the, the predominant training program in the world at the time and maybe the only one. I think that a lot of things have been added to the mix now, but around this is 1990 and that was still really the major focus and right away I was drawn to the strength of the company which was education so as soon as I finished my training program I said okay now how do I become a teacher and um, I always have had kind of the gift of gab which is kind of half the battle when you educate so I just dove right in you know like a lot of these kids are doing here today and I started training apprentices in the same program that I trained in and then I was lucky, and you talk about mentors, another one of my mentors was uh, Stephen Moody. Um, he would come to New York um, a few times a year. He was the vice president of education North America at the time for Sassoon. He would come to uh, New York to do the IBS show or to do a training at the salon. And I got to work with him, and he said to me, you know, I think you'd make a great full-time teacher. You know, um, at, Sassoon has an education um, department within it to, to run the academies, the cosmetology schools. Um, and, and where's that at? Here in America, it's based in Santa Monica. Okay. Um, and then in Europe, of course, it's based in London. And I was fortunate, you know, I'm again here, a kid from Brooklyn, I'd never really even been on an airplane. And he gave me the opportunity, but you know, they flew me out to California. And I got to work for a month. I thought, I, first, I never wanted to move to California. I thought I'm a you know, New Yorker, tried and true. After a month there, I never wanted to come back. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of great things in California besides the sunshine and the things that the sunshine makes come from the earth. You know, <laughs> right. it's a beautiful, wonderful place. Um, and then I really fell in love with full-time teaching. And 
met other mentors and, uh, you know, sometimes a mentor is a peer. You know, when I started at Sassoon, um, one of my good friends who's still my best friend, Julian Perlingiro, okay. um, he was like, you know, a year or two ahead of me, and he was one of the people training me on the classic Bob or the ladies' basic. And Julian's layer. from Philly, right? Julian's from Philly, so. and he works with Paul Mitchell and Angus. Yeah. Um, and he he had already been down this route, and he had already moved to California. So now I have Stephen telling me you should do it. Now I've got a buddy that I worked with out there already. Okay. And you know, it's it, it's just a continuation. So. Um, I've been, from early on, I mean, I, at this point, I'd only been doing hair for about four years, maybe five at the most, um, and I was full-time educating, because I was in this, you know, Sassoon Academy, and I did that basically for the next, you know, almost 10 years. So tell me about, like, so I just think about me being four years into doing hair, and and going to California, never been on a plane, like, tell me, tell me about your mindset like that's the stuff that excites me because it's like you just got shipped out there to to work with Sassoon right um just in <clears throat> California I think for me if I would have been in Iowa and somebody sent me to California just out of nowhere and I'd never been on a plane I think I would be losing my mind so yeah. what did, what was your thought process when you were going out I mean, there you know I mean from a technical standpoint I knew I probably wasn't prepared because I was still a young hairdresser but you know I I kind of have balls, so I wasn't right. really intimidated by, you know, um, the presentation aspect, or I've never felt shy to get in front of groups, and I like a good challenge. I'm yeah. very competitive. So. I think for me, like, I never really feel prepared, necessarily, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, not, I guess prepared is maybe the wrong word, but uh, I, but I think when you have the confidence mm -hmm. and the call, and you just go for something, I think that that's cool that you did that, um, because I don't think at four years into the business, a lot of people would just have the confidence to even try, let alone actually go to California. I mean, you know, granted, I, I kind of felt like I did have the Harvard degree because it was like four, it was like I, I went, I was at Sassoon for four years. I mean, right, yeah. I did like a year working in a salon before that, getting real world experience. And then I was, went through a 16 month training program where, you know, so I did, I had that little bit of confidence. Plus I just figured, you know, um, I can make it. I right. can make it happen. That's cool. Know? So um, let me see. Okay, so I saw a discussion. Um, it, it's kind of been going through Facebook for some reason, and and it's it's uh, it's one of those discussions that you hear a lot. And it's talking about young stylists or people graduating from school, and they're going to salons and they're leaving salons quickly mm -hmm. because of people are blaming it on they're not being taught the right way of the right thinking. Um, I personally, I said last week on our podcast that, uh, that it was, for me, I think it's more, we have to tell them about the journey and how hard it is and, and things that you've, that you've been through, that I've been working on going through, just the struggles that are actually in hard work, mm -hmm. but then the reward that pays off at the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, how, what do you feel about that with when Silas graduated? I mean, it's, it's a huge topic. I think I, you know, in the past decade or so, I've noticed a big change. I mean, when I was a young hairdresser, um, and at that time, Sassoon was the preeminent cosmetology school and perhaps the only branded cosmetology school. Um, the message was it's a craft. It's going to take a long time. It's very hard. Um, you're not going to make a lot of money at first. Um, but if you dedicate yourself to it, perhaps you could be one of the lucky ones. But then I think what happened, and it's a natural progression, the product yeah. world, right. which is a multi-billion dollar world, said, well, why don't we make our own hairdressers? And let's open our own cosmetology schools. And how are they going to be better? Well, they're going to be cleaner and fancier, and they're going to look better. We're going to charge a lot more money, but we're also going to tell them we're going to prepare you better. Right. So I think, you know, some, and I, I'm not trying to call them out. No, no, not Aveda, at all. Paul Mitchell, they've done a lot to upgrade the cosmetology school, but the student coming out also has this higher expectation right, right off the bat. Yeah. You know? um, and I think in those programs, they say, you know, you're going to pay more to come to this fabulous facility and we're going to prepare you better. But this is the difference. That, does, that can't happen. Because it's a craft. It doesn't matter how well you're taught in the first right. year, how clean the facility is. Within the, a year, you're barely scratching the surface. Right. You know, it takes six, seven, eight years of great mentorship to start to become a master in this craft. Yeah. 
So I think what's, that's kind of the root of the problem. And I've, I realized that many, many years ago. Um, I also think it relates back to how much more informed and intelligent the young people are these days. You know, um, when I was 19, I didn't have the world at my fingertips to find out all the information and compare and say, well, this isn't good and that's good. And I think, you know, what we've done here at Erojo um, has tried to tap into that and say, instead of um, fighting this, let's, let's give them as much of an objective plan as possible. So they come in knowing a lot more and we then bombard them with even more information, education, and a very structured program. And pretty much every kid that's here, and I call them kids, some of them aren't kids, but right. every kid that's here as an apprentice could pretty much on paper tell you right now when they expect to be on the floor. Right. Um, it's that structured. Now, it's, it, the ball's in their court. You know, so I think what happens back to they go to a salon and they say, I'm not getting the right education. Um, that salon doesn't have that structure in place for them to know I have to do six graduated bobs, eight one length trims, you know, 14 men's classic layers. They're going to be graded, you know, and I can pass. I can, the structure has to be there. And I think they crave structure because they're so much more intelligent or, or much more informed. Well, and I think salons really need, because like the salons I was just with four hours before this, before us, so, and I think a lot of them, the challenges is they don't even have a Facebook. They don't have, um, they didn't know what hair brand was. They don't know, like there's no inspiration anywhere. And I think if, if stylists want to move forward and inspire themselves, you're talking about a training program doing six bobs, uh, you know, six one lengths, whatever. Most, you're, you're right, like most songs don't have that. But even if they do, the consistency of it is the challenge. Sure. And even me getting a tour today uh, here at Arojo, it was like, you know what, I really got to, I got to step up my training program. I haven't hired anybody in a year and a half because I have a four chair salon where we have quite a few stylists and you know, it's, it's a, a little bit different, but it's not different because um, I think we're always making ourselves different in our head, I guess. As, as I was going through sure. the tour today, I was like, you know what, I'm not up to par exactly with where I should be training wise. And it takes coming to a place like this or just, being inspired by something, and that's what I love about Hairbrained mm -hmm. um, and you know, freesaloneducation.com. For me, it's, it's a source of inspiration for people that aren't in New York City mm -hmm. that can be inspired. So um, let's talk about, I'll get into the razor tip in a second. Founders of Hairbrained, mm -hmm. who are they? Uh, myself and Randy Taylor um, are the technical co-founders, right. you know, who literally you know, started it. Um, and then all of our friends and, you know, in the education world, the first people that we invited were friends of ours at Aveda, friends of ours at Paul Mitchell, friends of ours at Sassoon, friends of ours at Erojo. You know, I've been fortunate in my career that after getting that kind of Sassoon pedigree, I've worked for a lot of companies. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in most of those companies was able to connect well with the hairdressers, the key hairdressers. And then, you know, when we decided to do something, when we decided to create hair brains, we just reached out to all of them and asked them to promote it in their classes and in their events. And, you know, uh, we never wanted to be the biggest or I don't necessarily want everyone that was in your class today to be a member of hair brain. Right. I, mean, I don't want to exclude them, right. but it's their fault that they don't know about things like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that hard to be informed. Right. So maybe they don't necessarily um, belong there. And I, again, it sounds negative, but I don't mean to be that way. It's like, I want this to be a community of the most passionate right. people. And there's plenty of places for people to go and dabble right. and, you know, learn about a new shampoo or, you know, see a new collection. But the difference here is this, the people that belong are the contributors. Yeah. And they're the ones that are sharing and discussing. So, you know, we only want people there that really feel like they can contribute to the, co to the community. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, so tell me about, I call it the Facebook for hairdressers. I don't want to call it that anymore. Yeah, so explain Facebook to me. Facebook sucks. I now. know, exactly. So tell, explain to me how I, what, what you say. What is, what is your description of Hairbrain? I mean, Hairbrain's a platform for passionate hairdressers to connect with other passionate hairdressers. Right to share information, education, photos, inspiration, to celebrate the craft. 
Um, it's a platform. It's a place where you can go. It's the, you know, the place where you can go where you know there are other people like you. That, yeah. You know, I mean, um, along the line, you know, I, I wasn't always made to feel great even at a place like Sassoon. I mean, you know, 60% of the people that I worked with, they didn't really care that much about hair on a deep level. I mean, they might have been trained well and they were good at it. Right. Um, but they weren't hair nerds or overly passionate. Right. You know, and I want, we wanted to create, you know, a place where those people that were so uberly passionate could feel connected and feel um, like a home. Right. Um, and we also wanted a place where industry educators could stay connected. You know, here's a sad thing. So you mentioned before, I mean, I've been an, an industry educator for, you know, a good part of 20 years. I would say the majority of people that I taught in those 20 years, especially maybe the first 15, wouldn't even know me if they saw me. Because, you know, you spend these two or three hours or three days connecting with them and hopefully helping them, but then there's no continued connection yeah. after that. And that was one of the reasons why Ran it was Randy's idea. He's much more of a tech guy than I am. And he, we were doing these classes at Aveda and I wanted to like continue to follow up with the students yeah, and stay right. connected the way Lupe Voss has done with her hair color magic group. So that's another, you know, just got over a thousand people on that. Group? 1500, 1500, you know? unreal. It's awesome. Actively engaged, asking questions every day about color and formulation. And, you know, I mean, what she's contributed to a brand um, that doesn't even necessarily pay her in any way for it is right. stupendous that you can't pay for that kind of marketing and connectivity. Right. And that's when, so when me and Thad both, we started with, uh, with Hairbrain, and that was really our inspiration for um, deciding to create videos. Because before, I mean, YouTube is an outlet, and yeah, yeah we we it's not niche enough. I love yeah. YouTube because of the following that we've been able to create. But the fact is, Hairbrain, you put it on there, the people that watch it are <laughs> hairstylists, you right. know. And YouTube, right. it could be anybody. Absolutely. But me and Thad just decided, you know what? We love cutting hair. Normally on Wednesday nights, we would go, you know, have a beer or something after work and talk about hair the whole time. So we're like, you know what? Let's just film it. We had a, a crappy camera laying around. We were like, let's film it, edit it, put it together. I think I know how to do this. And so we put our first video on Hairbrained and, you know, it got a little bit of a response and it was like, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's have fun with it. Okay. And then it evolved into, well, how do we organize it? Mm -hmm. And then Free Salon Education came about. But, it, but I love Hairbrained because it is the outlet for hairdressers to right. share anything. Well, it's a place to ship what you've created. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's an important word because, you know, I hear from hundreds of people all the time about things that they're doing and creating, but they never ship them. They never, you know, it's always in the planning stages. And I think what you guys did is exactly the way that great things get created. You just do it and then you put it out there and you keep making it better and better and better. You can't wait forever. So yeah. if you have a crappy camera and you've got a good idea, it's better than a crappy idea and a good camera. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? It's like, and unfortunately, <laughs> that's mostly what we end up seeing. You know, people, I've seen videos and collections that have, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on. Nobody watches them. Yeah. Nobody cares. Well, in this world, like I, I was talking to a, an, a, a company and they were telling me that, you know, um, we have this unbelievable collection for 2015. And I'm like, well, this world today, you got to put out right. content every other day. If oh, yeah. otherwise, like every you said, day, hour, hourly, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise no one remembers who you are. No. You know, it was, it was cool. Like it, it's just, it's cool. Like we went to the New York hair show and people I've been working, I worked for Paul Mitchell for 10 years and I would go to the New York show every year and no one would have a clue who I was. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we put out videos on YouTube four or five times a week and we go to the New York show and we got people taking yeah. pictures and, mm -hmm. and, and it's not even about that, but it's about the fact that we're actually connecting with people finally sure. because you can't sit back and wait for, you know, for it to, to evolve. You have to right. just go do it. Absolutely. So, um, all right, let's see what my next question was, what, what is the future of Hairbrain? What, what are you guys trying to do? What, what's the, what do you got you know, going I mean, on? you know, I, I, this has been a big realization for me because, you know, I mean, people see the growth and the success and I get it, f this question and what's your five-year plan? What's this? What's yeah. that? And I've always felt kind of guilty 
um, or bad about the fact that I don't have a five-year plan and neither, we've never thought that way about harebrained. And I read something recently that has really cleared it up for me that I think was quite brilliant. And I was reading a Seth Gooden blog and he mentioned, you know, that there's three kind of games you can play. There's a short game, a long game, and an infinite game. And I was intrigued by that and I started reading it. And the short game is, you know, I'm going to do something right now, you know, for the next six seconds that better pay off after that. Right. You know, I, I'm doing something. There's, it's going to begin. It's going to end. I need to pay off. The long game, you know, you're willing to do it and stretch it out a little bit longer because you want a bigger payoff. And then there's the infinite game where the whole point is to just keep playing the game. Right. And that's what Hairbrain is. Yeah. It's the whole point is to just keep playing and moving forward. You know, that's the big picture. Right. You know, so we want to keep making the game more and more fun and adding things to it. Um, so we've added, obviously, the awards this year. You guys were nominated for a Hairbrain Video Award. Um, Which is a great party, by the way. It was a great party. Great. And I think um, I really believe that it's going to become um, a very important recognition and an award and a center f for hairdressers that are creating valuable content for other hairdressers. I think for true hairdressers, it will be the award. Yeah, so I, I from, like to believe from that. My, I know that it's yeah. your thing. Right. So from my standpoint, looking at it, right. um, it's the one award that I would work towards getting, right. you know, because I think that it comes from a totally different place. Right. There's not a dollar sign behind it. Right. There's a, you know, it, it is, it's coming from people that every stylist that's on Airbrain looks up to. So right. I think right. that's that's really good. You know, so and then going off that, we've always done meetups and we're expanding those. You know, that's where where the community actually can come together again in a in a more party like environment it seems to be something the hairdressers like to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we, we're doing these meetups at major events. But we also want to get into um, educational events, you know, not necessarily um, shows and circus like kind of things. But, you know, when I was a young hairdresser at Sassoon's, we used to have something called the teach in. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's pretty much more of a, of a European term, but it was, you know, always held in the academy and people would come from all over and there would be some presentations of models, but then it would be a much more technical, you'd walk away having learned something technical. And I, you know, we want to build off of that. You okay. Know? Um, and give the people that participate in it a chance to make some money. Right. You know, the independent educators or even educators that are affiliated with brands, a chance to have a stake in something that's bigger than just their one name. Right. You know, and that's been another big part of Hairbrained is, you know, all these different, and they were all our friends and all people that we worked with and, you know, they've all gone off and kind of continue to build their own brands. So we want to pull everyone together to do events that, you know, cover different sectors of the industry um, and give something valuable to the people attending and the people that are participating, they should make money off of it. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Yep. I like that. And then, um, so, and, oh, the meetup, that's what I wanted. So the meetup is at Premier Orlando, the next yep. one. Yep. Um, what day is that? Do you know? Uh, it's June 1st, Sunday, June, June 1st. So here's the story behind meetups. I yeah. mean, you know, we've been going to um, trade shows. I've been going to trade shows since I'm 19 years old. And usually the most um, intriguing part is kind of what happens afterwards at the closest bar where all the hairdressers, the educators, the people that are working the show, attending the show, get together, talk about the vibe of the show, the things that they saw, the things, you know, the networking of what's happening in the industry. So, you know, just like many things, we decided, you know, about five years ago to try to attach Hairbrain to that, to brand it. So the Long Beach show was really the first place. And, you know, our largest membership is in California. Okay. Um, and that's also where the, it just happens to be where the most hairdressers are. And I think that a lot of them are independent, so they need something to belong to. Um, so we started five years ago doing meetups at the Long Beach show that, that the PBA puts on, um, the ISSA. And it was always an informal thing. So it was kind of like the old rave days where, you know, <laughs> you would just send out a message and people would meet up. Right. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This year we had, you know, 150 people turn up at a, a little tiny hotel bar and they had to put up a rope to keep out the other 100 people because they couldn't even come in wow. to kind of hang out just to network and connect with yeah. like-minded people. 
So we finally decided to take it to the next level. Okay. To um, to get a much larger space. So now in, in Orlando, at the premiere show, it's attached to the old Peabody Hotel. Okay, that's cool. It's not called the Peabody anymore. They changed it to the Hyatt. Okay. And they've got a beautiful big bar there. So I called up and said, you know, how much would it cost to to block out this bar or make a VIP area. Yeah. So, you know, they wouldn't give us the whole bar, unfortunately, because we really could have used it. Right. Um, but they gave us a large area for, you know, 125 people okay. to have an open bar and to attend. Um, and um, we reached out to, you know, brands that we feel are good for hairdressers. Yeah. I mean, that's always been our um, kind of perhaps – deciding point of who we work for yeah it's like you know because there are plenty of brands that have plenty of money but they're not all good for hairdressers right you know so for us it's you know we're not a media company we're not just saying okay well you have money for an ad and i've got some ad space so we'll take your money right we're partnering you know we think of it almost like a pbs type thing yeah um you know we ha have a community that's creating valuable content and things that are good for hairdressers do you want to sponsor that we don't actually need anything from them we don't ask them to create content we i don't want a collection right I, i've got ten thousand pictures every month coming yeah through. yeah so it's kind of the reverse way of thinking do you want to sponsor that you know and that's what we said you know we've got this great meetup going on um do you guys want to sponsor it and we were able to you know um limit it to four brands plus the pba um who are really the only association for hairdressers that that work behind the scenes with advocacy and governmental issues. And I'm learning a lot more about it because, you know, like most hairdressers, I haven't been that aware of what goes on behind the scenes. Right. But that's really the only governmental advocacy group. So, you know, the brands that will be sponsoring us uh, for this meetup, it's in association with PBA. And then we're sponsored by Arojo, Aesthetica Magazine, uh, Millennium Salon System, and Hattori Hanzo Shears. And the idea was to have distinctly different brands from different sectors. Yeah. So you've got a product and an education company in Erojo, a media company in Aesthetica, um, a tool company with Hattori Hanzo, and um, what's the fourth one again? Oh, and Millennium, of course. Of course, Millennium. Our, our, you know, our, our really someone that I'm really proud to be affiliated with because yeah. um, I think they've brought so much to the success of hairdressers through the systems that they've created. Yeah. And I think John Harms is um, a very intelligent man who's got a lot to bring to the game. So Millennium is also involved there. That's why I always attach to that company yep. because right away when you walk into the building, yep. you're, you know that it's not just software. Right. And that's, so that's cool. I'm glad that, uh, to see them on board with Hairbrained as well. Um, all right. One, so I have one thing. So we have a razor here. Yep. So since we're, we're standing here, yep. and I've tried to figure out, Thad, is my razor right there or no? So I have tried to figure out this thing, mm -hmm. right, with the finger and the hand. Sure. So why don't you walk me through this okay. so that I can see how you hold the razor and just give me a little, a couple tips, your two favorite tips with a razor. You can okay, use sure. that guy and all Yeah. So, you know, essentially, um, after I left Sassoon, you know, over 13 years ago, I've been razoring almost every day since then. And it's through trial and error and working around other, you know, razor cutters. I'm fortunate to work with, you know, 100 people that cut hair with a razor almost every day. Yeah, I saw a lot of razor yeah. cutting going on. And, you know, uh, over the years, we developed something that I like to call the lock and load. And it's a way to keep you safe and help ensure precision. Okay. So, you know, number one, a lot of people, when they razor, they'll hold the comb like this. Okay. So what happens is the blade is, is loose and it can kind of dangle around and you don't have quite as much precision with your combing. Okay. Right? So what we figured out years ago was to lock with the index finger. So you lock and then with these four fingers, you make a sandwich. You put two fingers on the bottom and two fingers on the top. Oh. And, you know, right. it feels a little bit different from scissor cutting, and it is different, which is good, because we want to feel different to create something different. Right. Then to start to train the muscle memory, you have to teach yourself to rotate. Okay. So, you know, you sit there in the staff room and you do this a hundred times, and then you do this a hundred times, and then you do this a hundred times, and then you go at will back and forth. 
and then you've got the control. Now we work with a, you know, specific type of comb with a wider side for sectioning and for visualizing and moving the hair around, and then a very fine side for a very even, fine, definite tension. Okay. So then the, the mastery, the reason why you have to learn to do that so that you can take sections, rotate, comb very finely, grab the hair, and then kind of master your stroke. So then you're pinching just with your... Uh... Yep, so you pin we call this part of the blade the shaft. Yeah. And it is literally a pinch, so you pinch the shaft. Okay. Not an X-rated thing, but right. it just kind of is what it is. <laughs> and then, you know, if you want to do a very closed or tight stroke, you kind of ball your fingers in, so you can make small strokes. So you got to pinch. Got to get see that finger is actually pinching right there. Oh, okay. And you close that in, and then you can make very tight, tight closed strokes. Okay. To make lines, if you kind of start to open the fingers and loosen it a little bit, you can make bigger, looser, more kind of um, free form strokes. Okay. All we'll right. Try? We'll be working on that. Is it comb? All right. So let me see. So, so lock. We're, we're locking. Yep. Right. Yeah. Like that. Now make the sandwich. Yep, it helps right. to put the pinky on the bottom for stability. On the bottom yeah, of like uh, this. exactly. Aha. So there's your sandwich. Yeah, this isn't going to happen. To practice rotating. Hey, yeah, you're almost there. Yeah, yeah, go, we're good. go, okay. keep going. All right. All if right. you can do that a hundred times in a row, yeah, you yeah. Know, you'll start to build the muscle memory. You got to keep that locked. Oh yeah. Yep, See, for safety. Next time we meet. Yeah. People get very bored with this, but yeah. next time we meet, I will be flipping this around like right you would on. not believe. Good, good. That's I've watched, so I've I've watched Nick on video, mm -hmm. and I've tried, but just you know, I, we have a video educational website, but you can't yeah. learn it all from video. So yeah. that Absolutely. was really cool. And you know, right. it's about pulling the blade far away from the from the guest, from the client, from yeah. the work. So you see, when you're like that, you see where the blade is. Yeah. People comb through the hair, it dangles. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I mean, I was able to manage this for the first few years of razor cutting, but I never felt I had the same control or dexterity as I did with scissor cutting. Yeah. And then when we kind of evolved to the lock and load, everything fell into place. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. So um, a couple questions from the fans out there, okay. from the, the Gerard Scarpacy fans. So uh, with all the different razors, which do you prefer? Um, the feather plie. I mean, these are both feather pliés. Right. Um, at the Ero the Erojo has our signature red color on it, which is uh, for those of you that don't know, Nick is a big fan of Manchester United. Okay. So you know, is that what it is? Yeah, that's okay. what the red all right. is all about. So there's lots of red. It's all everywhere. coming together. Um, we're in the process right now of actually making another customized razor, which hopefully Hairbrained and Erosia will kind of team up on. Very cool. Um, it, those of you who have been razor cutting for a long time, remember the original plie was a transparent plastic. It was like an orange, tra I still have one, um, but they were too brittle and most of them broke. So we're working with uh, the feather manufacturers to develop some different handles. We did a wood one, yeah. but um, it was pretty much identical to the one that Bumble did. And again, the problem with that was they would break. They're too brittle. Right. So we've talked about adding, almost making it like a Bowie knife where it's got brass here and here. Um, it's still wood, but with the brass. That's so cool. Break. I like that. So that was the problem. I mean, I had that great Bumble razor for two weeks right and it fell on the floor and then the wood broke and yeah. i was never able to use it again okay so. well very cool and then so what percentage of the time do you use a razor versus a shear 50 50 okay you know i mean sometimes i incorporate them both together in a haircut um you know in terms of education i mean i figured that out a long time ago and so did nick i mean i don't want to be competing with all the best scissor cutters in the world to get classes and right you know, competing with every single person that's left so soon. So um, over a decade ago, I figured out what's something different that not too many people are doing, but people seem interested in. Yeah. And that's the razor. So the straight razor, especially um, unguarded straight razor, living dangerously and really doing amazing things to hair. Um, so when it comes to education, I'd have to say, you know, probably 80% of the time, I'm doing razor education. Right. Um, Twenty percent of the time, classic scissor cutting education. You know, so people still want to learn the foundations of precision. I spent the whole day today teaching uh, men's graduate. Yeah, it was graduate, cool. You had a full class today, and yeah. 
Um, and you said it was a four week program. Yeah, right? we, we do something here twice a year called boot camp where um, students come and live in New York for four weeks and they become completely immersed, you know, uh, 40 plus hours a week, five days a week from um, nine to five for four weeks. And the first week is classic scissor cutting. Then we go into color and texture. Then they come back to classic men's cutting. Uh, then they do some editorial styling and occasion styling, and then the last week is all razor. Cool. So um, it's been it's been a good time. Well, I yeah. love I love the facility. It's cool. I like the layout of it and how everything. It's just you have everything you could ever want in this building. Yeah. I mean, it's it's separated really well. So um, you know, it's cool that Nick did that, and I got the the background story of where the first part of the salon was and how it expanded. So yeah, I mean um, that's the thing. You know, a lot of people don't know. I mean, you know, when Nick started. Um, he had a four chair. He was a renter, literally. He had a, you know, he had a big partnership uptown that didn't work out well for him, and he didn't. He left with not much, twenty five thousand um, dollars, and he was able to rent a small space in the Aveda Institute around the block here, a four chair space. Huh. And you know, within ten years, had a ten million dollar a year brand. So twenty five thousand dollars to ten million. Now it's we not can't. Bad. Yeah, we can't say the TV didn't hurt, right? but how many hairdressers have been on TV that you don't hear about? And Nick's been off TV longer than he was on TV. He hasn't yeah. been on TV in, I don't know, six, seven years. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it's not just about that. It's about creating a sustainable culture that's fueled by education, quality, dedication to the craft. And it's really not because when, when I, I didn't know Nick was on TV, sure. but when I would go to the New York show... The pre not even the presence because it was like he had his booth there, mm -hmm. but it just there was such a vibe of it was really just about cool hair, education, mm -hmm. and just teaching people. And that was, I mean, just teaching people was all sure. it was about. Yeah, so, and that, you know, for the professionals, obviously that's been crucial. And then for clients, you know, I mean, TV was obviously a way to get the name out and also to get this out there because Nick did literally hundreds of makeovers using a razor that, like I said, it was great for our education because again, nobody, they saw it and they didn't know how to do it. And they, you know, um, they asked their hairdressers and then their hairdresser said, I got to learn how to do that. So yeah. it's all kind of worked hand in hand. Well, I mean, it is, everything's an evolution. And I think if there's a hairdresser out there looking to be inspired, I think just listening to you talk is, is definitely enough to get somebody going. Um, one other question from somebody on Instagram says, um, this is a question I've been thinking about for a while. How do you distinguish yourself from a hair, hairstylist to a hair artist? And what can I do to become an artist? What are some great techniques? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, the first thing that comes to mind is you really don't. I mean, that just happens through, you know, I don't think you can focus on saying, how can I become an artist? Right. I think you just have to immerse yourself in the craft first. You have to have references and you have to always be looking to create, you know, whether it's beauty. Um, you know, I mean, in the first part of my career, I wasn't as in interested in beauty. I wanted to try to, you know, create things that were striking or different or um, edgy or whatever the word is. And now the second half of my career, I'm less interested in that and more interested in, you know, how can I make this? more beautiful, whatever right. that means. Um, so I, I think it's about who you hang around with. I think it's about being open to um, references, looking at art. But I don't think focus on focusing on being an artist um, is necessarily the route to go down. Right. I think it's just being open to doing the best you can do every day and learning from your mistakes, um, copying, you know, that's like that old Picasso thing, you know, the best artists uh, don't, what is it? They don't just copy, they steal. You know, um, if I see something that I think looks good, I try it. Yeah. Um, and eventually you make it your own because if it's done with my hands, it's mine. Right. I mean, I can't, you can't do my haircut for me. So um, I think by nature of what you're doing and the road that you're going on, you lead to be, be an artist. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you heard it from the man himself. Let's. Do you want to plug anything? You got anything coming up besides the? Uh, the no, I just up? think you know, if you're a hairdresser that's actually you know sat down and listened to something like this, like you know, I commend you for um, you know having that level of passion and, and interest in what you're doing. And I think that you know you belong on Hairbrained, and hopefully you're already there. And if you're not, come and check it out. You yeah. know. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's easy to set up a profile. Yeah. Um, it's. 
you know, so you can share anything you want. I love that you guys are always adding things. Like I remember when my first video got featured on Airbrain, and it's just like such a good feeling. You right. know, it's it's right. it's being shared with a community of of your peers and right. people. And that, that's ultimately you know. the infinite game. There's always right. something to keep playing. Keep yeah. Playing it forward. You know, yeah. that's something that Nick has always said. And, you know, I was just talking to him the other day about this infinite game because he always uses this saying, play it forward, play it forward, which I believe comes from, from soccer or football. And I said, that's the kind of game that we want to be playing. You yeah. know, and if it's a, it doesn't have to be about yourself. Right. So if I feature you, I've just played it. I've just pushed the ball forward. Right. You know, we keep pushing it forward and that's what it's about. Cool. And if people want to book you for education, um, they can, they can here, get in or? touch with uh, Loretta at orojonyc.com. Okay. You know, I do, I still do in salon education. Um, I travel, you know, I don't do it as much as I used to. I used to make my whole career doing it, but you know, six to 10 times a year, I visit salons around the country and do hands-on education, um, all the major trade shows and events, but primarily the best thing to do would be to come to Erosion NYC and take a class. You know, I, I tend to teach the majority of them, um, along with the team here. And, um, I think it's a great experience, like you said, to actually come someplace like this and realize, you know, what can I do to make that happen? Yeah. 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 I think the most, the biggest place that I look to try to inspire is people that can't be in areas like this and right. they're looking, sitting there looking for inspiration. They can't go to New York or they can't go to Chicago or whatever to right. see, are they just, they can't. Well, I, that, that to I know, me is a I very know. I saw your subject. face. I saw your face. I hate they that. They can. I hate that. You, if you want success, you have to go well, out. I'm from Iowa, it. so yeah. I, I'm here. Well, you have to go out and get it. <laughs> but, you know, and people always, you know, a lot of hairdressers don't make a lot of money and they say, it's where I live, it's where I live. And I say, move. Nah, yeah. You know what I mean? There's, there's, in every state in this country, you can charge over $100 for a haircut. Yeah. Every single one, every state. It might not be the zip code you live in. You might have to drive two hours a day to get there if you don't want to move, but you can. Well, you I know. live in a town of 3,500 people and I charge $100 for a haircut. Well, there you so. go. So it can be done. There you go. And it works. So Gerard, thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you be a part of this, having you at your place. <laughs> Thank you for letting us come. Pleasure. I will see you. Thanks, guys. See okay, you so we're back. <laughs> uh, real time. That's that hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. If you guys would have seen how we edited that one together. Um, <laughs> so we're back, and we're going to go into industry news. Uh, we still have the wheel to spin and uh, some, uh, I think that's pretty much, and a little business tip, but that's not going to be that long. And so, a game for me. And, and a game for, for Brian. What time is it? We've like what time is it? 10.35. It's 10.35? Okay, so let's... So basically, industry news, Sally Beauty turns 50 according to Modern Salon. It was a cool article in there. So if you get a chance, Brian found one thing that he thought was interesting. It started in New Orleans. I thought that was interesting because so did I. Yeah. That's where I was born. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I started. Um, Me and Sally. Yeah. So both big deals. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing that? Yeah. What? Under the Naha thing? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So Naha turned 25. So there's... Happy birthday. And that was on uh, Modern Salon as well. So a couple of great articles on Modern Salon if you want to read them. You know, we don't have to really go over them. I just thought it was cool that... Um, you mean, I worked for Sally Beauty. Nice. I was not excited about it the, at all the whole time. Think, okay. Because I was in... <laughs> I have said this before, but I was in beauty school when I was working there. So I already had that whole, like, don't color your hair at home. And then I'm everybody awesome. comes in, they're like, so what kind of dye should I get and uh, color my hair with? And then, you know, you have to tell them. So I quit. Nice. Plus, they all had these, like, fake products in there. It was like, this is like That's where this. I used to get my manic panic when I was young. Yeah. Mm hmm which is cool. Because it great felt place like for that. legit. Because I was like, oh, it's a beauty supply store selling. So it's going to make this pink last even longer in my hair. Yeah. No. I, no. So happy 50 years. It says that they've opened, um, I think when I read on there, it was like 10,000 locations in the last couple of years. Wow. So Nice. Well, actually, there's only 3,400 locations worldwide. Oh. So well, I maybe don't think they opened 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was totally <laughs> off. Check it out was, Modern Salon for that article. They had a really big year this year. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Locations worldwide even. It was really late last <laughs> night when I looked at that. <laughs> I think they opened like a million stores this year. Nope. Yeah. 3,000. Worldwide. In 50 years. 
<laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> 19,000 people work for them. That's pretty cool. For the 100,000 stores they have? Yeah. <laughs> That's not bad. Nine. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, wait. Let's, so Let's go what? Let's so we have two things. We're just going to do this right now. So we have our... Uh, we have something to share because last week <laughs> <laughs> we were in the salon and it was after splitting hairs actually, mm-hmm. right? Because Thad left and went to the knack, I believe. Obviously. <laughs> so when Thad was at the knack, we knew that this was going to happen. We just didn't know exactly when this was going to happen. We were right? waiting. I don't know why there weren't bets yeah. on it. So Thad... <laughs> we should have bet on we it. We should have. Thad, Thad is really into fitness, weightlifting. He's been cutting for a while he can't wait to eat a cheeseburger on june 1st right so we all know where we're going thad um on instagram put up a picture (laughs) and what was that picture drea oh there it is there it is there it is there's that oh and so the muscle picture came out for the first time that we've seen yeah so and we all were just standing here and we're like it happened it just (laughs) And that, that literally was the vibe between everyone. It was yeah. like, yep. Yep. Yeah. We knew this was happening. Thad used to be like this really skinny, kind of scrawny guy. And he's been working really hard for the last year yes. and a half, right? Yep. Every day. And the there gym. he is. He's now joined the legions of guys taking gym flex Hashtag selfies. Hashtag flexing <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> so congratulations, Thad, on your newfound muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for posting them for the world to see. All right, so we have a game. Are you ready for this? No. So, Thad, can you prep Brian for the game? I don't know what this is. You just get ready. <laughs> just relax. So just my thing was... I'm scared because of how big a smile it gives you, so I, I know. know I'm screwed. <laughs> so my thing was, I just want to see how well you know Paul Mitchell products. So what we're going to do is we are going to... You have that camera ready? Yeah, I did. Okay. I just reset it and I'm turn it off my So we are going to... We have to do this quick, though, because we don't have much time. Yeah. Um blindfold you oh nice so that was the blindfold yeah that's why i had to come up with the blindfold this morning you're super slick yeah so we're gonna blindfold you is this what, wait what is this is it's this my plain? socks <laughs> <laughs> is it not uh, fit? i have a huge head i know you should have worried about that. that i was gonna custom order a huge handkerchief <laughs> but i forgot a sack of potatoes amazon wouldn't do same day delivery um are no. we good oh check it out all right all right, so you got the product. So we're going to start off with one product. What you have to do is you have to smell this product. I was going to say, am I eating it? Like, no, no, you're not eating it. You're just going to smell it. Because I will. And then you have to tell us what that product is, or at least the category that it's in, because most of them categories smell the same. So first product coming up. Are you ready for this? This is not a product knowledge test. <laughs> I know, but you have to know all the ingredients and everything, right? So I figure if you know the smells as well, it'll be good. I don't like this. <laughs> what is it? I'm just afraid someone's going to like fart in my face no, or something. No, that's not good. This isn't jackass. This is fine. No. You can't smell it, really? I don't know. We'll give him another one. I don't know what this is. It's, I can barely smell anything. Is it the towel? <laughs> <laughs> I just smell this dirty towel on my face. <laughs> it smells like something out of Pooey Wild Ginger. There it is. Is it the ding, conditioner? Ding, ding. No, it's the oil. That's Not probably oil. why I didn't. Oh. Good job. Aubrey, Thanks. Wild ginger style treatment oil. Good job. All right, next one. Am I, am I done? Let's do two more. <laughs> this is funny. What? This is funny. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, what is it? Uh, super skinny shampoo or conditioner? It's in, so it's in smoothing category, but it's a styling product. Is it the... Uh, relaxing bomb? Yes, it is. Check him out. Not yet. Give him uh, <laughs> That one's good. That's a we'll have no do two more. Trust. <laughs> trust. In what? Oh, quick slip. <laughs> <laughs> that's tell, not going to get you far with Paul Mitchell. I tell this story all the time. I love That's probably my favorite product, but it's yeah. the only product that Paul Mitchell makes that I don't like the smell of. Okay. I think it smells like fish food. Nope, next one. Okay, and that's it. But it's a great product. It's in my hair. Actually, just give him that one. Oh, my God. We don't Guys. need to trick him. No, 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 no the, the Paul Mitchell one. We were going to trick you with a non, but you know what? I like this. This is impressive. This is a tough one, though, so think hard. 
It smells like one of the hairsprays. Okay. It's not a hairspray. Well, it smells, it has that same smell as the hairsprays. Okay. Like the. It's a tough one. It it's a product? It doesn't have hold, but it, but it, and it's not a hairspray. It, what category is it in? That, is it soft? Is it, it, I was going to say, it smells like one of the soft, flexible, because you know all yeah. those sprays smell the same. Yeah, but it's not a hairspray. Like the freeze so. and shine smells like the super clean, all that. Yeah. It's not a hairspray, but it still smells like those. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Dad, why don't you spray it? It's the so shine. It the shine? The shine. Yeah, that's a tough one. That was good. Okay, you can take it off now. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Dad. That was a good sport. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's really right when you come out of a blindfold in here. Yeah. So, right, so good job. Thanks. Success. So, you're, I think you're going to have a good weekend. Based on that? I think you know. <laughs> yeah. I think this could happen. They might do this. It's true. So I think you're, um, personally, I hope that you have a great weekend. I Thank think you. that you know more than anyone about these products. So I'm very excited to hear how you do. Thanks. And I think it's going to be a good trip for you. So congrats on that. I'll call you while I'm out there and let you know how it's going. Um, I'll selfie from class. Yeah. <laughs> you're back next Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, which reminds we me. We can get a recap on it. We might not be able to do a step four next week because we'll be here Wednesday. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll film it. We'll Without fil- me? Yep. We'll n- no, we'll film it <laughs> when you get back. So how could we film it without you? Duh. <laughs> so um, so quick business tip. I thought this was cool. I, I read it on uh, behindthechair.com. Um, it was uh, like five quick tips for... Um, Uh, start promoting special offers basically on your website and stuff right now. Because the thing I thought about this was think ahead. Don't, so bridal packages. (laughs) Get it. (laughs) Bridal (laughs) packages, graduations, Memorial Day, like all this stuff, Father's Day that's coming up. Think about those things now and start promoting them because if that's something that you're trying to draw business in for your salon, you want to think ahead and not uh, like me. I All of a sudden it's like two days before and you're like, oh. I wish I would have thought about that. So, um, or okay, I've decided we're doing this promotion now, starting today. Let's go. Yeah. So like, come up with it, have meetings together, and we'll go over it. You know, and that's things that it would be cool to do that on splitting hairs sometime. What maybe when we have everyone here, just kind of think about holidays that are coming up, promotions that we want to run, and just do it like this, because then people could see how that process works. I have a good end of year one. All right. That I'll come up with it for the end of the year. Okay, cool. So um, let's let's bring your mom on. Okay. I want to talk to your mom for a second. Come on, mom. Don't trip on the cords. Come on over. Here, you can take my seat. It's the most uncomfortable seat ever. <laughs> so let's. So just make sure when you talk, you just talk right into that microphone. Okay. And. So you you live in Key West, right? I do. So Brian, um, Brian tells me that you always have things about the show and everything. So tell me, tell me what, when you watch this show, now being here, what do you think is like the big difference from watching it on the computer to seeing it happening? Uh, you, probably, you probably edit out less than, a lot of what you're doing is, is what you end up seeing. Yeah. So this, this is it. So yeah, yeah. We don't really edit. Yeah. It's all pretty much the way it is. So that's cool. And then, um, so you're here for a big wedding. Your son's getting the married, The royal right? wedding. The royal yes. wedding. <laughs> so that's exciting, right? It is. And you have your dress and everything. I have my dress. So tell me about Brian as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, tell me <laughs> like, uh, what he, so when he told you he wanted to be a hairdresser, let's talk about that. Did he come tell you that, or was that something you just figured he was going to be? I don't know. Um, do Brian's think? always been creative, always. Okay. Started really little, he was going to be an actor, and then okay. decided he was going to be a director. Okay. And then when of he course. got towards <laughs> high school, he told me he's either going to be famous or infamous, he didn't care which, and that made me very nervous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then a little bit of bartending I think he's always he's a f- an incredible artist yeah and I always thought he would be um an illustrator cartoonist designer something like that yeah but this is this is his mode of of creating things so this is his art his oh hair. that's really cool like her haircut. 
I do like her haircut. Thank so he was stressing <laughs> about your haircut. He was like, oh. my mom's coming, and I need to, like, she loved the haircut last time. So um, that's cool. It looks really good. Thank so you. let me think. Um, so then when Brian was in beauty school, he came, you were in Jersey for that, right? He came to New Jersey? Correct. And you were still, you've been in Key West for how long? Eight, eight years, nine eight years. Eight years? Mm-hmm. I want to go to Key West. We got we to gotta make a trip. I know. I need yeah. a salon Brian tried down doing there. that. Yeah, we need a salon. So maybe we'll open a salon in Key West and we can just travel back and forth. That works for me. <laughs> so is there any good salons in Key West that you love? Um, I've been to a lot, so there's none that I've gone back to often enough. Okay, good. Well, if there's any salons in Key West that can hook up Brian's mom, that would be great. So let us know below because... We need to be able to do this haircut some oh, more. Perfect, thank you. That would be fun, right? <laughs> then I can leave Brian alone. <laughs> All right, so what time is it? What, we should probably do trending tresses. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a great wedding. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate and, it. And uh, watching the splitting hairs all the time and giving us the Thanks. critiques. Yes. Nice. <laughs> all right. So, Drea. Yes. Let's get into trending tresses. All right, so we have set it up a little bit differently this week because you wanted to break down the styles a little bit more so we don't have as many um but Pippa Middleton has cut off her longer hair she's chopped it onto that shoulder length bob haircut and I think I it's like fun. they styled half of that and then didn't the other but I mean she's out of yeah, party yeah I mean so. huh it's interesting I would have liked to see a little bit more movement and layers through here a little bit more texture it, it, I think it's a it little too bl- heavy it's a little heavy. It's a little blunt, except for the little face framing that was right around her jaw. But that's how I would like to see it differently. Cool. Then we have Diana Agron, who I missed this last week, but I apparently she chopped her hair off specifically for the Met last week. Oh, the nice. Show. She's no stranger to chopping her hair, though. No, she, she's not. There's a picture out there that I use of her all the time for like this great textured, like razory, messy bob. So. I like when she cuts her hair. Yeah, so I thought that was fun. I liked it because it was more, I liked how she styled it for the gala. That was fun. All right. Then we have Nina Dobrev, who has created a little bit more of a balayage ombre. But what I like about it is it does have some dark pieces going through it still at the bottom. Right. Yeah, we were talking. That's what sort of kept us from wanting to just call it an ombre was that there was still some dark like I think you if you mixed your balayage technique with your balayage ombre technique, that's how you would achieve this. Yeah. And I got to say, she's one of very few ombres that I've seen that I really liked that doesn't have any lightness going to the root. Like, you yeah. know, there's usually some around the face. This is just like a mid shafts and end one that actually looks really pretty. Well, what I really like about it is because she's so dark and rich on top that... Um, she would look washed out if she had that blonde up there. And I think that's what is the key to this look here. Right. Cool. All right. Then we have Kylie Jenner who has, um, she had lightened up her hair and then now she has blue over top of it. And I put this in here because I know Brian is a big fan of Inkworks. And um, I just wanted him to talk about how, you know, you can't always just straight from the bottle of ink to put it on something. It doesn't always come out. Well, it's just about making sure whatever the, base you're putting it over. Like, if you don't exactly. get it light enough, <laughs> we discovered that with my hair. If you get a, if, you, if you only lift to yellow and you try to put blue over it, you end up with green. Right. Yeah. So. so. Cool. Then we have Blake Lively. She, um, this style was talked about for, what a, award show was this? Uh, no, it was the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, yes. Okay. There's so many. So many. <laughs> um... But what Brian and I both thought was really interesting, and we talked about it yesterday, was essentially with this style is it's just a sleek ponytail that they've then, it looks like they rouged it a little up at the base and started the braid a little bit further down. But it's just a simple three-strand braid that they've pulled out and created this style for. It was really cool. I like that. Maybe we can get Barrett to do that. Yeah. Tip. Tip of the week. Yeah. Barrett, here you go. Make her. (laughs) <laughs> all, all right, right and that was it very cool very cool, cool. so uh to sum everything up i have videos coming up i'm going to do some mevo videos because this is like one of the coolest tools ever so i'm going to uh touch screen it's the tv's not touch screen <laughs> but if you had a tablet you can touch the the screen but 
Um, you know, it's just, it's going to be really cool to be able to showcase this stuff. My, some of my favorite things on here are the fact that you can like the reporting, when you look at it, it comes up like almost like you're driving a sports car is what I said to them. This combo bar, you can type in Brian appointment at 5 PM and it'll just take you right to the book. So there's so many things on the software that I think is going to be, you know, really cool to showcase and to show people what Mevo is all about. And you can get it for $49 a month for, uh, chair that's, rental that's and all huge. that stuff so um so yeah episode 32 success one for the books. we haven't picked the winner yep. yet so uh, wheel. spray bottle we have this on on uh i gotta spin shop too. fse oh we do have to spin so you know just new products whatever it's fine it's just go bottle. on the store it's a spray bottle it's cool looking uh drea who's spinning to win all right so our spinning to win is gregory calabrese okay cool Gregory, what are you going to get? We got to work on PowerPoint. Pivot point. Pivot point, PowerPoint. Pivot point head. That's the... The <laughs> magnetic head thing. That yeah. don't stick to mirrors. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So that don't yeah. stick to mirrors. They stick to a dry erase board and you can draw around it. Um, I've used them in a lot of my classes already. And uh, just being able to not have to trace Well, plus it's head. just fun. I mean, even if you're not teaching mm -hmm. with yeah. it to sit there and just kind of give yourself another way to visualize whatever yeah. haircut you're to trying map to out your map own. out in your head. Right. Uh -huh. So it's neat. So congratulations on that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Email it to claim your up. prize. Awesome. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode with Gerard and, and Brian's mom. I mean, there's so <laughs> much, so much stuff happened this time. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, Plugs, right? Do you need anything? Instagram. Hairstyle. Hairstyle. Dre Day 2289. Free Salon Education. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And we will see you guys on the next video. And Thad Bolin. And Thad Bolinized. <laughs> if you want to check out <laughs> his muscle, muscle pictures. Picks. yeah. There's more to come, Just, I'm sure. <laughs> if you want to see this. If you want to see Thad pointing on the way to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> it's that way. Check him out. ThadBolinized.com. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Hey, guys, this is Barrett Silitano from freesaloneducation.com with our tip of the week. This week, I'm just going to show you how to do a simple, easy rope braid. A lot of people think that you just have to twist it one way and go the, go one, go the same way with it, but it's really the opposite. So I'm just going to show you a quick, easy technique to do it, and here we go. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm just going to split it down the back of this mannequin. Really simple. Get everything in one hand. A lot of people can do these to the side. I think they're kind of fun to the side. You want to twist it to the right and then you're going to start the other side and also twist that to the right. Now here's the key when it comes to the rope braid. You twist it to the right but then you go opposite when it comes time to crisscross them to do the braid section. Keep twisting Keep twisting to the right, both sections, and crossing over to the left. Twisting to the right, once you kind of get in a groove, it's a little bit easier. Keep twisting to the right, same thing all the way down. This is a fun braid that you can pull out, make a piecier braid, make it a little bit messy on the sides, and it's just something fun and quick and easy that you can do. If you have a longer piece on one side, twist that piece a little bit more. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to take a hair elastic, put it around. You want something a little bit tighter, so I wouldn't recommend using a thicker elastic when it comes to something like this. If you have enough hair at the bottom, you can wrap it around to cover the elastic. And then you're just going to take a heavier hairspray and get any loose ends, say if you have a few layers within there, then you're just going to, I'm just going to fray out the bottom just to give it a little bit of texture. But if you have any layers in there, taking that heavier spray, going down with it along the rope and keeping it within that braid. And there is our simple two strand rope braid. Stay tuned next week. I'm Barrett Silitano with our tip of the week. I just broke up with you. Although as we both know that isn't true Friends, of course I feel much worse You 
understand 